video, let's focus on two measures that you might be interested in with data, and those are skewness and kurtosis. The data we're going to be looking at today is some data from the Child Health and Development Study that I downloaded from Berkeley, and I will include this link in the description. And the variables we have today are the birth weight of a child in ounces over here. This is an indicator of whether this was the first child uh, born to the mother or not. Length of the pregnancy in days. Age of the mother when they gave birth. Height of the mother. Weight of the mother. And did the mother smoke? So over here I have some descriptive statistics of some of these variables. Birth weights, uh, gestation, age, height, and weight of the mother. I have the average, the median, the standard deviation, which is a common distance numbers are from average, the skewness, and the kurtosis. And in Excel, to calculate skewness, it's just equals skew, equals S-K-E-W, and then tell it where the data is that you want to find the skewness for. There's also a different version, like there is for standard deviation, if you want to calculate the skewness and you have the entire population of data. For kurtosis, it's equals K-U-R-T, equals KURT, and that's the same command whether you have a population or a sample. So let's talk about what these measures, skewness and kurtosis, mean here. So skewness measures, basically, if, if you have a histogram, let's look at a histogram here. If you have a histogram, skewness measures, is it symmetric? That would be no skewness. Or is the tail of the distribution pulled to one side or the other? So this data here looks pretty symmetric. We would expect a skewness number of about zero. If we were to drag this tail on the right side out, we would consider that to be positive skewness. If we were to drag this tail to the left side far down, a lot further than the right side, we would consider that negative skewness because it's dragging it down towards negative values or smaller values in the negative direction. Kurtosis is a measurement of how pointy the distribution is. And by pointy, we mean how pointy is this compared to a normal distribution. In other words, what we're really calculating here, what we usually talk about with kurtosis, is excess kurtosis. Excess kurtosis means, is it pointier than a perfect bell-shaped distribution, or is it flatter than a perfect bell-shaped distribution? So a positive number means it's very pointy, and a negative number means it's very flat. Let's look at some distributions and the numbers we get for these skewness and kurtosis figures. So let's look at birth weight first. Skewness very close to zero. Now what do I mean, how close do you have to be to zero? Well, usually we say that if skewness is in absolute value, the absolute value of skewness is less than 0.5, right? So the absolute value of skewness is less than 0.5, we say it's pretty symmetric. If the skewness is between 0.5 and point, and sorry, and one, that's an absolute value, we say it's a, a little skewed, right? Slightly skewed, a little bit skewed. Um, if skewness is greater than one, we say that we say there's a lot of skewness, right? Very skewed. So this is just a rule of thumb that some people use. So very skewed if it's bigger than one. So since this number is very small, close to zero, less than 0.5, we would expect to see a histogram that is pretty symmetric here, as we see. Now what about kurtosis? Let me bring up a picture from Wikipedia that's very informative here. So this image, I think, is the best representation I've ever seen to try to help us understand what these values for kurtosis that we see look like. So this very pointy one, remember kurtosis, if it's positive, it means it's pointy. If it's negative, it means it's flat. So this red 
pointy, very pointy line here corresponds with a kurtosis of three. The one that's a little orangey just below it, that's a kurtosis of two. The green one here says that it has a kurtosis of 1.2. So as you see, as we get to lower and lower kurtosis values, we're getting a little less and a little less pointy. Now, a normal distribution, that's this black curve over here. Normal distribution, perfect normal distribution, has a kurtosis of zero, an excess kurtosis technically of zero. And as we take that normal distribution and we squish it down flatter and flatter and flatter, we get negative values for kurtosis. So this one has a, this blue one has a kurtosis of minus 0.59. That's what we call a semicircular distribution here because it looks like it's half a circle. And as we get, oh, sorry, that's the light blue one. The light blue one is 0.59, negative 0.59. The semicircular one is minus one. The, the darker blue one, minus one. And the one that is perfectly like a square here, very much like a block, is minus 1.2. So this value here of 0.4 for kurtosis tells us that this histogram for birth weight is a little pointier than a perfect normal distribution would be. Perfect normal distribution might come up and look more like this without these extra, extra observations right in the middle, making it a lot more pointy. So this is an easy way to tell, hmm, is my data normally distributed or not? If it's normally distributed, it shouldn't be skewed. That checks out for this one, but this one is a little too pointy to be a normal distribution. All right, let's go on to the next variable, gestation. So gestation here, if we look at this histogram, it looks like see some observations way down here. These are premature babies born very early and that drags the tail of the distribution to the left. We would expect it to be perhaps negatively skewed. And look how pointy this is. Um, it's not a nice rounded bell. It has this huge peaks in the middle. I would expect a lot of pointiness, kurtosis, and maybe a negative skew here. Let's look at the calculations. Skewness is minus 0.8, and so that's moderately left skewed. Kurtosis is crazy here at 6.6, .6, telling us that this is very, very pointy. Okay, let's look at the next variable. Okay, so this is a histogram of the mother's age. And you see this tail dragging off to the right. That's an indication that there's positive skewness. When the tail points in a certain direction, it's skewed in that direction. So we'd call this right skewed or positively skewed. And as far as pointiness, I can't really tell. Let's look at what our computations in Excel have told us here for age. So skewness, positive. Kurtosis, slightly negative. So it says this is slightly flatter than what a normal distribution would look like. All right, let's look at the next one. And height of the mother. So for height, let's look at the numbers first and see what we should expect. This says maybe slightly negatively skewed, not much, and kurtosis close to zero. So this tells us that maybe this is going to look pretty close to being a nice bell-shaped distribution, perhaps with a little bit of left skewness over here. And that's kind of what we see. All right. And our last variable, weight, tells us, before we look at the histogram here, Weight says it's positively skewed to the right, and it's going to be pointier than a normal distribution. Let's look at the histogram to see if this is true. Yeah, that does look like it's quite pointy, and it also does look like, if we zoom out here, it does look like it is skewed to the right or positively skewed. So that's how to interpret these values, these descriptive statistics for skewness and kurtosis. Now, last thing I want to mention is just kind of a technical thing. How are these calculated? I'm not going to go through the exact formulas for skewness and kurtosis. I just want to give you the basic idea that when you calculate skewness and kurtosis, they're sort of similar to what we do when we calculate a sample variance or a population variance. The big difference, now there are some other differences in these formulas, but the big difference is when we... Um, calculate skewness, 
instead of raising things to the second power, we raise them to the third power. And for kurtosis, instead of raising to the third power, we raise to the fourth power. Now again, if you just go calculate this, but you raise this to the fourth power, you're not going to get exactly the same answer you're going to get. But that's the basic idea where these formulas come from. But the actual formula for skewness and kurtosis is actually much more complicated. I encourage you to look it up on Wikipedia if you want to know what the exact formula looks like. Much more important is to let the program calculate it for you, but you need to know how to interpret what it means. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the question or comment section below. And if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Good luck. Talk to you later.